Okay, now I'm going to show you how to cup coffees. And by cupping, we mean cup tasting. It's short for cup tasting. Basically, it's the way we evaluate coffees when we purchase coffees. But you can also do it just for fun to taste the difference between each coffee. It's pretty easy, but I recommend doing it with more than just one coffee. It's pretty simple. You just need some cups of the same size, uh, grinder, water boiler, a couple of spoons, and some coffee and water. That's it. I'll show you how to do it. So these cups take about 180 grams of hot water. So we're gonna measure about 11 grams of coffee for that. You can go a little bit higher or a little bit lower, depends on the strength you want. But for me, when I cup, I tend to want to have a little bit weaker coffee so I can more clearly taste the difference. So 11 grams of coffee, and we're gonna use 180 grams of water. And you need a precise scale for this, so preferably with a 0.1 gram precision. It takes a little bit of time to set up, but I kind of enjoy that time because it's the time to start meditating and uh, prepare yourself for tasting coffee. Okay, so now we have three different coffees in three different cups. We're gonna grind them cup by cup and then pour the water on. And for the grind setting I use just normal filter grind, just the same grind setting you would use for brewing half a liter of V60 or filter coffee. If your grinder contains a lot of leftover coffee, you might want to measure the amount of beans you put in and then see how many grams you end up in the cup. Because if there's a couple of grams stuck in the grinder, you need to purge that before the next coffee. So just do that by grinding a little bit more of the next coffee. So just take a couple of grams, grind it through and then you grind the cup. So now the coffees are ground, I'm just gonna give the water a little bit of boil and then we're gonna pour it straight into the cup. And I'm gonna measure how many grams of water I have in the cup, but if you know the approximate amount, it's not a crisis, you can just pour it straight in. Uh, but when I do evaluate roast for instance, I need to be very precise so we actually evaluate the roast and not the difference in water level. So just as a rule of thumb, about 60 to 65 grams per liter, that's what you need to use and just measure your cups before you start so you know what kind of ratios you need to use. So now I'm gonna tear the scale, put one cup on and start the timer and just pour the water on. And this is very similar to the French press or steeped or cookie coffee. It's just the same thing. Water and coffee. Next cup, tear the scale, do the same thing. And just make sure all the grounds are getting wet, otherwise you'll get an uneven extraction. And last one. And already I can smell the wonderful aromas from these coffees and what we do normally now is to just smell the crust of the coffee because they will smell very different and a lot of people will like to take notes, one smells like fruit, the other one smells like nuts or whatever, but it gives you an indication of what you're gonna be able to taste in the coffee. These coffees are very different so it's quite easy to smell and that's why I recommend if you want to do this at home buy coffees that are very different because it makes it a lot easier to taste the difference. Rather than just buying two or three coffees from a small region in Kenya, it's going to be very difficult to differentiate the difference for some people. So the more you do this, you're going to train your taste buds to be more and more accurate when you taste. So we're going to leave this for four minutes. It's going to steep and then we're going to stir the crust and then skim and then we're going to start to taste. It's been four minutes now and I'm ready to stir the coffee and what you want to do is to be very consistent when you stir. So stir the same amount of time in each cup. So the standard is three times in the surface, that's the sort of SEAA standard but do whatever you want as long as it tastes good. If you grind very coarse you need to stir the bottom but I'm just going to do the top here so. Wow, that smells extremely fruity. This one smells a little bit more herbal. Oh, and this smells like sweet milk chocolates. Okay, the reason why I smell when I break the crust like that is because a lot of the aromas are released when you do it, so it's even easier to evaluate what it actually smells like. Now I'm gonna skim the, the foam on the top because that tastes quite bitter and it has a lot of particles in it. So it's just like with the French press, you just use two spoons to skim this off. If you think that's difficult, just blow on it. And then you can use one spoon and just take the foam off. 
like it would do when you boil stock, for instance. And if you want to really follow the protocol, you need to rinse the spoons between each cutlet. This is a home cutting, so I'm not so picky on it. Okay. If you taste the coffee straight away now, they're going to be extremely hot and they're going to taste quite bitter and not so nice. So it needs to come down in temperature. Also, there's still a little bit of sediment floating around, so they will settle to the bottom the longer we wait. So normally I just leave the timer on and around 12-15 minutes, depending on the hot weather, if it's cold inside you can start tasting at 12 minutes, if it's very hot you can start maybe at 20 minutes. But you don't want to burn your tongue immediately, so be a little bit careful. So now it's been 12 minutes and the coffees have come down in temperature, so now I'm ready to taste them. What you do, you need a, like a soup spoon uh, that can contain a little bit of liquid without spilling too easily. And you just take a little bit from the top. Don't take from the bottom because that's where the grits are. So you don't want to get that into your spoon. So just take from the top and then you just slurp it like it's really hot soup. And a lot of people practice this slurping technique, but you know, the point is to get oxygen into your mouth. So all the aroma sort of evaporates into your uh, nasal cavity in here. So you can actually smell what difference are between the coffees. So. First, just go through a round. And I tend to spit because I do this all day and I'll get caffeinated if I don't. Mm. Huge difference. Here we have uh, Honduran Java variety, uh, Castillo variety from Colombia, and then a Kenyan SL28, which is so much more fruity than all the other ones. So it's pretty easy to taste the difference. So you'll get an impression now when the coffees are really hot, but I recommend waiting another, you know, 5-10 minutes and then taste them again. And then we'll see it's even easier sometimes to notice the difference. And if there's any defects or something, the coffee will taste worse and worse and worse. If it's a really good coffee, it'll still taste fantastic when it's cooled down. So this is how we do the cupping and uh, I basically do this every day because we always need to evaluate roasting or buying coffee or quality control in some sort and this is how we do it. So it's pretty simple to do at home and I highly recommend trying it out. Good luck!